Welcome to Walking in the Purple. This is Thursday, May 8th of Linda It's time to discover the gift God has for you. I'm bringing awareness to what God has for you and the purpose behind your pain. If you have passion in your soul and if you haven't unleashed, well, well, then let's talk about it. Having served in the United States Army for the last 18 years and continuing to serve as a service leader to inspire, motivate, guide, and assist residents, I'm bringing a contemporary vibe to being happy and living your dream on earth. Each week, I will introduce you to a life filled with purpose and how that purpose is being used to glorify God, describing the tips, resources, and strategy to set you up for success. So now, let's jump right in and discover the gift God has for you. Good evening, everyone. You are listening to Walking in Your Purpose. This is Thursday night at 8 with Lens of Faith. Tonight, we have a very special show. This show was led by God, literally. I tell you, I changed it up in 37 minutes. So tonight we are doing a women's empowerment chat. And guess who we have on the line? We got the authors, two of the authors, the visionary, two co-authors from the We Are Women of Substance anthology. Kathy Smith, Star Holmes Word. Welcome tonight, everyone. Hey, hey, hey. How's everybody? I hope everybody is doing good tonight. And we are going to bless y'all tonight. We're going to bless y'all tonight yeah. with a little bit of something, something that we just put together. And look, we already had it in us. It's already in us. And you getting ready to get it, okay? So I just want to tell you all, Star Homes Word is the CEO of Your Star 2, Yielding Outstanding Results. results. Yep. She yep. is a coach, a speaker, and a writer. And of course, she is the visionary author of the We Are Women of Substance anthology. I know you all have seen this book lately. Around the internet, it is going viral. So make sure you get your copy. Star, how are you doing this evening? Girl, I'm blessed, blessed, blessed and blessed. I'm doing so, so well. Today's been a great day. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> Spare the moment, turn around, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It's all I'm good. Highly favored. Yes. We mm -hmm. also had Kathy Smith on the line. She is the president and CEO of Chandeliers for Christ, a non for profit in Tampa, Florida. How you doing, Kathy? Sis, hey, I'm Kathy. good. I'm good. Hi, Star. Hi, Chandra. How y'all doing? Well, y'all doing good today. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, look, we got a lot on our plate. We got this women's our inaugural women's conference coming up here in Tampa, Florida, the 25th yes. of August. And we have been, you know, stirring the pot and preparing and getting ready. And guess what the main topic is? It's women's empowerment, women's empowerment, women's yes. empowerment. I'd like to thank you all for jumping on the live line with us. Thank you so much. Diane, how you doing, Sean? And Najee, bless you for joining us on the live line. Dr. Kelly Silver, one of the co-authors. Yes. Hi. Hey, Dr. Kelly. Is jumping on the live with us. God bless you, my sister. So, look, we're going to dive right on in. We, we're talking about encouraging one another, encouraging one sister to another. So, I'm going to start with you, Star. Tell me yeah. what that means to you exactly about encouraging one another. How do you encourage your fellow sister? <clears throat> you know, Chandra, it's funny. When I was growing up, really and honestly, I did not have a blueprint in front of me to really, you know, take heed to what encouraging one sister to another looked like. You know, it's unfortunate that I have to say a lot of the women that I um, I saw growing up, you know, there was a lot of bickering back and forth, whether it was in my family, whether it was, you know, just around the family. And so it has taken me some time as an adult to really kind of look at different situations and women's empowerment and women who are empowering to each other to really begin to understand what women's empowerment looks like. And I have to tell you, I've told this story once before, twice before. I walked into a conference in Dallas, Texas called Epicon. 
um, by Master Coach April Hunt, who's the producer of that conference in 2017. And when I walked into that room, everything that I remember hearing in my lifetime in my ear about how women are catty and chatty and mm -hmm. ugly towards each other and vindictive and all of those things, I did not see any of that. I walked into a room that was filled with women that were empowering each other, encouraging each other, that were hugging each other, that were giving business tips to each other, giving personal tips to each other, that were embracing each other. We even prayed for each other and hugged each other. We cried together. It was amazing. And so from that moment on, and, and really even before them in a different capacity, you know, I've been helping women, talking with women, helping women map out their lives since I came from the world of DV and uh, SA, Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Advocacy. But once I left that conference, it was really on my heart and my mind to go up another level in terms of connecting with women and empowering women. Because one thing I know is that I've seen every spectrum of where women are in this world, from the ones who have a uh, higher education, from the ones who came, came from the gutter. I've seen it all. And everybody, the, the likeness of all of us is that everybody needs encouragement sometime. And so that's the glue and the bond that keeps us together, um, knowing that everybody sometimes needs encouragement. And so I'm excited about this movement and this empowerment movement you know, that has been birthed from We Are Women of Substance, where we're no longer standing in the back of the line. We're now saying, look, we are standing in our power and we're moving from the back to the front of the line. And sister, take my hand. I'll take you with me. I'm excited about that. Amen. Amen to that. Kathy, what's your take on encouraging one another, sis? I think Star covered just about every topic <laughs> that you could think of. It's absolutely moving from the back to the front of the line, having, I guess, as African-American women, especially in corporate America, or a lot of times in the workforce, we have this stigma of being angry black women all the time. People feel like that we have this attitude, but they don't know what's behind that confidence. It's not just an attitude. That woman may be broken. She's gone through some things. There's a lot that's packaged up into us as women and to just be able to live through that, to not look like what we've been through to be able to share our stories with other women because the same way that we go through it and you guys have heard me say sometimes I feel you may not feel like it or whatever you have to put your little perfect patty face on and go out into the world you know or whatnot and it's really not about that it's more about the transparency and sharing testimonies with other women so that they know that one you're not alone somebody else has stood in your shoes and it may not have been that long ago and whether it's the woman at the top of the corporate ladder or the woman at the bottom of the gutter that's just trying to figure it out or figure her way out of a situation Come on now. we all share those same we, we share common bonds i talk to people from different walks of life all day every day but one thing that I find in talking to women, for the most part, we have a lot of similarities. Even in, uh, in our circle, we talk about, wow, it's so, it's so weird how we have so many things in common and look how God brought us together and we all come together to encourage, hey sis, how you doing? I'm just calling to check on you. I don't need anything, I don't want anything. I just wanna make sure that you're okay. Or look, I'm taking this class, I'm studying this. Did you know about this? Come on, let's go do this. The whole that sister's hand and take her with you exactly and just like michelle raddix just commented every woman has a story we all have mm -hmm. a story and guess what when we share those stories we don't know who we're going to impact we don't know who we're going to bless we don't know who's waiting to hear what yeah. we've gone through so they can get yeah. through what they need to get through and i don't mm -hmm. know how many times i check my inbox and people say wow sis i watched her live and it really touched me i, didn't, I had yeah. no idea you was going through that yeah. I had no idea you was going through that. And now you just helped me go the next step that I need to, you know, take the next step that I need to take. That, right. that empowers me just to hear Absolutely. that, that I touched somebody, that something that I said resonated with them. And now they can move their butt as the DI says, you know, That's they can right. get up That's and make right. a move for success. 
And, you know, encouraging one another, trend, you know, it goes hand in hand with supporting one another. Now, I got to share this with you all real quick. Tonight, I received a text message. I, I was added to a group tonight. And a couple of, I think all those ladies are on the line. Uh, Michelle, Sean. Hey, Diane. Ambassador it's Michelle all. Raddix. Come yes. on through, Ambassadors. Ambassador Diane is on the line. And also, hey, Sean. Ambassador Diane. And you know, the first message I said they sent me was, guess who just got their business certificate? Level up. That's what I'm talking about. And we all chimed in. And was yes. like, yes, sis, yes. yes. Throwing yes. them tidbits out there. And Erica chimed in. This is what we need to do. That is encouraging one another. That is supporting one another. That is what we're talking about. That is the absolute example of what it is to encourage one another and support one another. We need to hear that. We need to hear that, sis. You're Absolutely. doing a good job. Kathy, you yes. doing that thing Ooh. over there. Star, That's good right. job today. We need That's to hear right. that. We really yep, need yep, to hear yep. that. And I don't know how many times I can say it, but we must say, good job, sis. Congratulations, sis. You yep. did a great job. Sis, come help me do this. Or call my sister up. Sis, how you doing today? I ain't heard from you in three days. What's That's going right. on? What's going on? That will spark right. something in that sister to say, well, sis, I've been down. Or, well, mm -hmm. sis, my day ain't been yep. so good. Well, sis, I've been shut in my closet for two days going through right. hell and back. You know, right. but just thing because, through. yeah, just because you reached out, guess what? That's just the saying, Oh my god, I gotta get out this funk that I'm in. Yes, I gotta come on this now. Thing around. Yes, and, and now she may even call somebody else that she ain't heard from in two, three days. Yes. Right. right. You know, so we, we gotta come through with this encouragement and these blessings and support for one another. Mm. Kathy, tell me in the last week or so. How many times can you really say that you've uh, reached out to someone and said, how you doing or, you know, checked on someone or just encouraged someone? Tell us about your, your last week. How many, how many times? times? Sandra, I talk all day. <laughs> Let's see. In the last right. week, um, um, I'd say I at least, least maybe seven or eight times. Mm -hmm. I just did it today. The sister I hadn't heard from in a while, I'd say probably maybe right around seven o'clock, I called like, hey, sis, how you doing? I haven't talked to you. Just reaching out to see how you and the kids are doing. I know you guys moved. Have you gotten settled? Things like that. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. It's mm -hmm. that easy. But yes, you know, sometimes people need their space. I got it. You know, sometimes we'll lean back mm -hmm. off of one another and be like, okay, it's been a day, you know, I'm, I'm in my love funk. I'm trying to navigate through what I got going on over here, right. dealing with my kids, dealing with my job, you know, mm -hmm. and you may be in a love funk yourself and you just, it, it just comes over you and you just don't want to reach out. But after a while you turn on your social media and what do you see? You see stuff happening. And so that yeah. kind of gets you back mentally engaged and say, okay, now it's time for me to get out of this funk. And cause I do it with y'all, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes I may fall off. And then all of a sudden I'm back and it's yes, like, yes. I never was gone. I just yes, jumped right yes. back in. But you know, sometimes yes. we need that downtime, but well, yeah. you can't be down too long. Cause I'm going to reach out. Like, look, I ain't talking That's to right. So it's been four days now. Come on now. Yes. You ain't that Absolutely. busy that you, that you can't reach out. Then people be like, I just been busy. Okay. Stop the shenanigans. You ain't that doggone busy. <laughs> and we ain't heard from you in seven days now. Right. Text Come message, on. Message, phone call, something. Mm -hmm. You know what I found too, Chandra? When a person stays to themselves for too long, they may really and truly be going through something. I've had some sisters that literally have just stopped answering the phone call, not responding to text messages, not on social media, anything. And you get to a point like, okay, I've called a few times. I'm going to give them their space or whatever. I'll back off for a little bit. But then something on the inside of you will not let you just let them go. You, mm -hmm. you get that little, you get that voice from your inner man, that inner spirit telling you, no, you need to call again. And you call. Yeah. So now I'm at the point, and I don't mind sharing with my sisters that 
sometimes reaching out to see how you doing, I may be going through something, but right. I become uplifted and inspired simply by checking on somebody else. Or, oh, Chandra's doing, Chandra's doing good. I love that. I love that. Now I might've been in a funk a minute ago, but then now I'm seeing what somebody else is doing. And that gives you that encouragement. And sometimes just sharing that, Hey, how you doing? I'm doing this. I'm going through this, whatever, whatever. And then you may be talking to somebody say, you know what? That's jacked up. But let me tell you my story. And then you figure out that they've been in a worse rut than what you've been in. Right. And you just help to pull them out of their rut. But at the same time, it's motivating and encouraging you. Yeah. Sure enough. I'm going to tell you a story uh, real quick. I can remember a time when my children, my two oldest children, they're uh, 17 and 18 now, and they were probably uh, one and two, somewhere around there. And I can remember it was a time when their father and I had separated. And so it was just myself and the two children. And we were really, really going through a tough time. And I wrote about this some in my chapter, uh, We Are Women of Substance. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time when we did not have lights and we were in our apartment he was gone already so everything was on me so i was working two jobs prior to that but because we separated i could only work one job because of course child care only stayed open so long right so i had to give up that other income and try to stretch those pennies and i can remember going through so tough and not having lights in our apartment so we had to get home with the children in the afternoon. I had to hurry up and figure out what our candle situation was going to be that night right before it got too dark. Mm -hmm. And so it is at those really difficult times in life that I realized that, oh, my God, am I the only one going through? You so embarrassed when you're going through tough times right. like that, that you don't want anybody to see you in that horrible of a state. With, yeah. especially with your children. And I can mm -hmm. remember a woman coming to my door one night and she was from my church at that time out in uh, it's Nehemiah out in uh, near Harvey, Illinois. And she knocked on my door and I know she knew I didn't have any lights and I crept that door open just a little bit, right? She slipped me $20 through my door. And let me tell y'all, I was so excited to receive that $20 bill. It was just like it was a $100 bill. So know that don't be weary in well-doing when you're right. doing something from your heart that yeah. that truly does touch someone, even if they're in a place right then in that situation where they can't express how much that has really touched them and affected their life. Yeah, absolutely. 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 You know, and just like Dr. Silva just commented, she said, some are so broken that they are afraid to reach out because they have been betrayed. And that's right. absolutely right. You know, some of us, unfortunately, have come in contact with women or men that take our information and use it against us. Right. And, you know, they tell everybody your business and talk bad about you in these streets. And they share things of your personal, you know, uh, stuff. And you don't want that to be shared. That is betrayal. And so, yes, some people are afraid to come forward and share with sisters and communicate what's going on because they don't want people to know their business. And right, that's, right. that's real. That's real life. Yeah, and I, I definitely real. can understand that. I definitely, definitely can understand that. So can I speak to that real quick? So sure. it's that situation of when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Yes. There are always red flags in every yes. situation, okay? And so before we begin to just lay out our life before people, I don't care what kind of relationship it is, if it's a male to female or female to female relationship, friendship, still, before we do those kind of things, you want to cultivate a relationship. You want to make sure that that person is worthy of you and holding your secrets, right? And so that's one of the things when we're cultivating relationship, we want to look at how that per person handles other people. Do they come to you and speak those people's business? Because if they do, they absolutely can go back and speak yours to someone else. Yes, yes. that's true. That's true. That's true. That's very, very true. Yep. You know, our relationships and that goes back to even our marriages, you know, our marriages and our uh, relationships with when you have boyfriend and girlfriend and we don't pray over our relationships. We start mm -hmm. relationships, not knowing people, not giving, mm -hmm. not building a relationship with them. Just dive right. right saying, yeah, now you my BFF. Well, what does that really right. mean? You know, who are you? I don't even know you from a can of paint, but now you calling me your BFF. 
I just met you 25 days ago. You know, how, right. how we going to be BFFs already? You know, yeah, that's, that's a big, big flag. flag. Yeah. That's my bae. Here come exactly. bae. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but some people just dive right in. They just take yeah. a deep dive and don't know nobody from a can of paint. And they just, and then they wonder why the relationship went sour so fast. Right. Right. Well, I didn't know nothing about that 20 years ago. I didn't. Right. I've had plenty of broken relationships with sure, males sure. and females, you know, boyfriends I'll, and I'll girlfriends, you know. Yeah, so yeah. now I know better, you know, literally, right. I right. know better. So I do better. And I think a lot of us tend to have a problem with knowing better. And, and just like my pastor says sometimes, he say we know what to do, but we don't do what we know. You know, hmm. and so we fall short. And then we're right. looking at ourselves like, oh, well, why did this happen? Well, just think back to why that happened. You know, right, what did right. you do to facilitate it happening? You know, and oftentimes right. we, we want to lay blame on other people for our failed relationships. When sometimes we need to take a look in the mirror and say, hey, we facilitate that's, that's, that thing. And this is why it's working. You know, and there's a different accountability when you know better. Yes. When you yes. know that you can't just be out there really nearly doing anything mm -hmm. and living like you used to live, then when there's a when you know better, the accountability is a lot stronger. You suffer more than somebody that's out there that's just doing crazy stuff and they don't know it better. Exactly. Exactly. Sure enough. So, ladies, let's take a different turn here for a second. Yeah. We're all talking about businesses and, you know, building each other, encouraging one another. Let's talk about our financial situation. Now, I know this mm -hmm. may be a touchy subject and we don't share bank accounts. I don't call Kathy up and be like, girl, let me screenshot you my bank account, my bank statement from 30 days ago. So check <laughs> this out. How are we going to build successful relationships and empower one another through building our finances, you know, financial security, building your credit. I use Credit Karma, y'all. I mm -hmm. love it. I absolutely love it. It sends me alerts. It sends me messages. I hold myself accountable, and I've shared that with some of my friends and say, hey, mm -hmm. get Credit Karma. It doesn't go against your credit report. You can check it as many times as you want. It keeps you financially sound and on top of your bills. Kathy, what do you use? I have credit karma as well, and I've also gone through professional credit counseling. And it's not, I guess, in our traditional term. There's a young lady here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, as a matter of fact, she's in Bradenton, Rachel Spate Hudson. And Rachel Spate Hudson has taught me a lot <laughs> when it comes in terms of credit, how to pay your bills. And when I say how to pay your bills, when to pay your bills so that you know when to pay them to, for it to have the, the maximum impact on your credit report. If you find yourself in a rut and maybe you have some slow pays or you fall behind on a few things, how to pick yourself back up and get out of that simply through communication, communicating with those creditors, letting them know what's going on, asking them to put things at the end of the loan or waiving the late fees and things like that. She's even, I didn't realize that you could go back. I guess when you look at your credit report and you have the ledger where it may say 30, 60, 90 days late, or they may have comments that in um, underneath some of them, it may have a comment outside of just the little legend that they have. It may actually have the words 30 days late or 90 days late or whatever it is. You can actually go back and dispute those comments. And I didn't realize until I was getting ready to purchase a home how powerful those comments are. So yes. it wasn't just about keeping the legend, the, the little color-coded key that they have up to date. It's about getting those comments up to date, removing inquiries, not applying for stuff. You have people that will offer you all types of things on a regular basis saying no. <laughs> no, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. I'm about, you know, a certain credit score or I need a certain amount of money in my bank account. If I don't need it, I keep going. If it's something that I can pay cash for, then you pay cash for that versus pulling out that credit card. Mm -hmm. That's Star, good. What do you use, sir? So I have not tried credit karma yet. Um, I used to have a CPA. And I went, I moved away from that once I got married, but my husband and I actually this year just really started having this discussion 
about utilizing the CPA again be due to the business and, and you know, all of the different components of our finances and how things are changing. So that's our decision this year that we'll hire a CPA this year to assist us. But I just want to say, I notice whenever we have these conversations about finances that we really shy away from really taking a look at our finances because it's difficult. You know, I get it. It's difficult. But it is something that is so important for us to do so that we really are educated about the best moves to make for our families financially. And, and you know, I'm one of those people, I believe you don't stick your head down in the sand and leave you behind in the air. I believe in grabbing the bull by the horns. You know what I mean? Take control of your situation. Be proactive so you won't have to be reactive when bad things come. Yeah, so that's my look at that. You use the acronym CPA. For those that don't know what a CPA is, can you tell them real quick? Uh, The Certified Public (laughs) Accountant. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So thank you all. You are watching Walking in Your Purpose. This is Thursday night at 8 with Lens of Faith. Thank you all for joining the live line with us. Those that are catching a replay, please hashtag replay so that I will know that you took time out to watch this live video. Thank you so much. So we're just going to keep going. We're going to jump right back in. And I am, I'm just sitting here thinking right now. Here, Dr. Kelly Silver says, I'm actually considering teaching a financial literacy class to women. Amen. Amen. It's needed. It's needed. Amen. It's much needed. So I, I was just sitting here thinking, and I think about all the times that I swipe my credit card. And I think about all the times that I you know, go to the ATM. Well, I swipe my credit card more than I go to the ATM because I, I was robbed at gunpoint one year and I, I vowed never to carry cash on oh, me wow. you know, more than like 40 or $50 at a time. Yeah, this happened right. way back, way back in, I think it was like 2004 or three or something like that. <coughs> but anyway, okay. um, I, I just sit here and think about all the times that I swipe my car and do I necessarily check my bank account before i swipe my car all those times but you know i kind of do this i kind of know how much money i got in the bank because i checked it one day or another and i say Mm -hmm. okay this bill has already been accounted for that bill has already accounted for and i go to the store and i'm in dillard's and i want this nice pair of shoes and i'm like swipe (laughs) well (laughs) do do any of y'all do that you know guilty girl you go to the store, you don't necessarily be like, okay, hold on, let me check to see USAA real quick. Because you thinking in your mind that you got $2,500 and you like, okay, this pair of shoes only $100, you know, it, it right. ain't really going to count against it. But, you know, I don't I don't stop to check my bank account every so often. So, ladies, what what do you really think is a, is a good number of times you're supposed to check your bank account within the month? Within 30 days? Ooh, you know, I check, I try to check mine um every other day, every two days, because, and one of the reasons why I do that is because I don't have it set up where the automated withdrawals that I'm paying for things monthly come out of a separate account. They actually come out of this one account. So I need to be on top of that. <laughs> yep. Yes, I check my account at least once a week, sometimes more, but at least once a week. Yeah, I'm and then I, I, my husband calls says that I analyze too much, but I mean that's who I am. I like to sit down, look at my budget. I'll go back if I'm in Dillard's and I want those hundred dollar shoes. <laughs> or for me, it's usually finish line because I'm not a big heels, you know, high heel girl. But uh-huh. so, so nice sneakers, absolutely. So if I'm in finish line or champs or something like that, and you know, tennis shoes cost almost two hundred dollars a pair. If it's something that I just have to have, or as women, we like to look nice. We may want to splurge a little bit and get our hair done or mani-pedi, something like that. Then I go back to my budget, like, okay, I hadn't worked this in. Let me make sure I go back and subtract this to see where I am. Right. So I've been using um, USAA uh, budget uh, analyzation on on the thing, on the USAA website. And when I go on there, you know... uh, I want to say about maybe 10 years ago, I used to go in the red and I'm like, why is this red? And they say I'm over budget, you know, because I spent more than I was allocated, you know? And so now I'm much more financially sound and conscious 
of what's going on, you know, especially because my households are split. I'm in Augusta. Right. My family's there. I got to take care mm -hmm. of bills there. My husband does bills there. And then I got bills here in Augusta. So now I'm much more financially sound because I'm like, look, my households are split. I got to, you know, know what's coming out of this pot. That's I got to know right. what's coming out of this pot. Yeah. But now I, I'm getting ready to transition this conversation into making money at nighttime. You yes. know, sleep. Come on, yes. with it. on oh. buttons. And I'm waking up and it's more yeah. dollars in my pot. Right, you know, right. So I yes. thank God for multiple streams of income. Wow. I thank Show God. Up, for girl. I ain't know nothing about it until a couple of years ago. I started diving into, okay, what is it that I can do to produce or to make multiple streams of income? Now, Star, right. you, you talked about this a little bit when I interviewed you the first time. But tell the listening audience about mm -hmm. multiple streams of income real quickly. Well, um, you know, since all of us work and now usually there's even two people in the household when it's a two family, you know, two parent household with children. And it's a it's a necessity today for all of us really to be working and trying to make these ends meet, especially if you're talking about you need the overflow. So where does the overflow come from? If both of you are working and you're taking care of your family budget. Right. And all of that money is allocated to the household then you need some of the overflow to do other things, whether it's your entrepreneur journeys or your other projects that you're trying to do. And it takes money to make money, right? Exactly. And so I love the idea of making money um, while I sleep. And I have to say, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I absolutely do get a chance to look at those PayPal accounts and see the cha-ching. And I'd be real excited yeah. <laughs> when I wake up and there's some extra money rolling up in PayPal. <laughs> yeah. And I need that in my account. And I'm like, you okay, let me switch that over to the other account to handle this right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm so absolutely. grateful to be able to say that I'm starting to implement the things that I'm learning about my finances, about those residual incomes that are important for all of us to have. If you want yes. to do more in life, right? It, yes. it has to come from somewhere. So uh, what does April say? She said, make something and sell it. Create something and sell yes. it. Right. Yes. <laughs> I don't care what it is. <laughs> I we're know, all very like talented, you know, that's mm -hmm. the thing. We're all really talented. And if you really take the time to start creating, creating some content and market it and sell it, you're going to Absolutely. be so surprised. Even if you start at a lower tier level, 1099, every day waking up, four or five people bought something from you for 1099 every yes. day. Yes. Come on now, this, the cha-ching, this adds up. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What Chandra was saying earlier before we got started about the uh, her book yeah. and how she's selling it. I have to say, she is one of the co-authors in the book that is selling uh, books hand over fist like hotcakes. Yes. And she was just talking yes. about having that extra residual yes. income coming through and being yes. able to pay for other things. I love yeah. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, I was just able to pay for this broadcast too. So uh, Come on thank now. you very much. We are women of substance and for a year. For a year, that for means year. something. For yes. a year, yes. Because I have been, you know, beating around the bush with getting the the platform to do the talk show platform or be live. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, you know, I'm gonna just do the free version as long as I can. And lo and behold, tonight I said, oh, I'm gonna have three people on the line. What I'm gonna do? Well. I went to my PayPal and it was like, that's what this Come is on. for. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I had a nerd to be having a little attitude like, well, why are they going to make me pay the whole yearly fee? I can't pay monthly. <laughs> But wait, the blessing was in the fact that the money was in the account yes. to pay for Amen the whole year. To Come that. on now. And that, <laughs> you didn't tell me, did you get a savings for paying for the entire year? Yes, I did. Okay, come on with it. Yes. I did. Yes. I did. I did the same thing. I have to say, I agree. I did the same thing, trying yep. to receive those savings. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, why? Why are they making me pay the whole fee? <laughs> come on now. <laughs> I'm finding that with conference tickets, with everything. Mm -hmm. 
If you wait until the last minute, you usually end up paying more. But if you True. can pay for it in advance when they're offering those special discount packages, like the We Are Women of Substance inaugural conference coming up yes. in camp, I'm just going to put it out there. Come on and roll it in, girl. We're at a lower price now, but for all of our last minute people, or you may come to the door, then those tickets cost more. So take That's advantage right. of those savings when they're there. Lord knows I do. I, I shop. Hey, what's the two offerings, ladies? I know we have two tickets currently. So there is a $35 ticket, and that's for people that already possess the book and you just want to come to the conference and do brunch with us. There's a $35 ticket, but if you want the book and the conference that and the experience and the brunch, then that ticket is $55. So we need Absolutely. you to get that. We need you to get that. And, look, and let ticket. me tell you something. I was looking at the ticket prices for the inaugural conference in Tampa, you all. And I was also looking at the menu. The food, the brunch itself is $26 per plate. So yes, this yes. is a steal of a deal because it's the inaugural conference. And we are very intentional about getting women in the room to yes. be able to have a conversation with them and be transparent about who we are. Are, what we have endured in our plan and our vision for the future. So look, you cannot beat a thirty-five dollar ticket with a bat. No, right, not right. Okay. So Get Kathy, tell That's us, tell us a say. little bit. Tell us about the conference, Kathy. Well, for the conference that's coming up, we have spoken word to motivate, encourage, and inspire women. We have spoken word lined up. We have praise dance lined up. We have a DJ to keep us all on our feet and in the groove. We have our, <laughs> you know, right, because we, as women, especially women with ethnicity, we love music. Music can that's make right. music that's music right. can pull you out of a funk, everything. So we have that lined up. We have our guest speakers coming to, to take part with it. We have vendors from around the Tampa Bay area to come and showcase their products and their talents. And we just want to take advantage and network with other women. So if there are other business women that are out there that may be listening to this broadcast and maybe you didn't want to come and set up as a vendor, they can absolutely come and use it as a networking opportunity. You never know what, what sister may have another product that you may need or they may have that knowledge and you get together and you start sharing knowledge. I'm all about savings. If I can reach out to Star and I know that Star may have knowledge on financial literacy or Dr. Kelly, as she mentioned, instead of me going to pay for private lessons or whatnot, I'm going to reach out to them first and say, hey, is this a wise financial decision? Do I right. really need to pay X, Y, and Z for this bucket? Or one of the sisters in my network may already offer this training and instead of going to put that money elsewhere, I can go and support their brand and their business. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm a huge, um, I, I love the idea of collaborations. Yes. Um, and so I talk about collaborations a lot because this past almost two years has really shown me how fast your business can grow with yes. the correct collaborations and how you can gain so much more visibility with the correct collaborations. Collaborations are everything. It is later and done with those times of doing everything yourself and yes. only you on the platform. Collaborations is where it's at, ladies. And networking is how you learn who is out there that would match my level of collaborative need. Right. And so that's one of the other things you want to do. Plus, with the book, We Are Women of Substance becoming a movement. I'm so excited about the things that we're getting ready to offer, the webinars, the retreats, the um, the movement itself, uh, uh, because we'll be bringing workshops and also those uh, membership groups that are coming. There's so much coming, ladies. So please. Let your friends know if they are in the Florida area, anywhere near Tampa Bay, on August the 25th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. They want to be with us. Um, Chandra, let everybody know where the conference will be held. The conference is going to be held at the Sheraton at 10221 Princess Palms Avenue. That's in Tampa, Florida, more like the Brandon area. Um, we have a flyer that we're going to post at the end of this broadcast. I've also 
posted the Eventbrite link. Come join us. Come out and fellowship yeah. with us. We got this book. I'm going to tell y'all, we poured our hearts and our souls out in this book. And this book yes. is all about, this is our real life stories. Okay. Right. About how we have gone through the fire and we come out not looking like what we've been through. That's and I right. know women of God that you all can resonate with our stories. One story or another that's in this book will touch your life and bless your soul. So come on now, fellowship with us. It's not all going to be about telling our story, but we're empowering one another. The Absolutely. same thing that we were doing tonight on this conference, we're ready to reach down and pull somebody else up yes. to, a level, yes. to a new level, to a new beginning. Because guess what? Just because you've gone through hell don't mean you got to live in it. Absolutely. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. You cannot get me excited up in here. And a lot of reasons, a lot of times you're going through hell because the devil has already looked and saw what your future looked like. So he had to give you those roadblocks to try and stop or make you feel like there's nothing better when your breakthrough is right around the corner. Right around around the corner. corner. Look at here. When you're supposed to be at that anointed and appointed time and place, y'all better get your seat so that you can get your blessing. You one step away from it, that door that you're getting ready to open, that's the door where your blessing's waiting for you. I know that's right. Yes. I know that's right. We got a couple of the co-authors on the line. Coach Lalisa, hey. how are you? Hey, Coach Lalisa. Hi, Coach Lalisa. God bless you for jumping on the live line with us, Coach Lalisa. Oh, my goodness. This is such a powerful, powerful movement. I got my shirt, y'all. Did y'all get y'all shirt? Y'all I have not got y'all my shirt. shirt yet. It's ordered and on its way. Book Shirt Conference. Join us 25 August. Y'all don't want to miss this movement now. I'm telling y'all. We didn't tell them that that $26 per person is all you can eat buffet. Come on Come now. out. It's a lunch buffet. Yes. Where else are you going to find it? And we're not serving you fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Trust me, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm from the South. I love fried chicken and mashed potatoes. But you have a nice, nice menu. There will be a nice spread laid out for you. And if you look at the price of the ticket, $26 for the food, that's not leaving much else. The majority that's of the money is paying for the location. We care more about feeding souls than we do yes. collecting your money. Come out and yes. share with us. We want to share our testimonies with them. And yes. we want the people to share their testimonies with us. Because at yes. the end of the day, it's all about motivating, uplifting, and inspiring other women. Women inspiring yes. women. We yes. can do this. Yes. And there are I want to know where look, I want to be looking into the eyes of the next, you know, women standing in their power, our Sojourner Truth, our Harriet Tubman, our Susan B. Anthony's, our Rosa Parks, our Oprah Winfrey's, our Ursula Barnes, you know, Rosalind Brewer. Absolutely. I want to know where these women are standing in their power, getting ready to turn their communities upside down oh. by standing in their power. Not the next feminist, but I want to know where the what next woman feminist is who's standing yes. in their power in yes. their community and will not take no for an answer but they are standing in charge they are moving from the back to the front of the line join absolutely. us ladies absolutely yes. i love it yes 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 yes, oh, yes. I'm, I'm up now y'all oh my god <laughs> yeah, i can't up. wait to get to tampa y'all Come on. And then I didn't even tell them that I'm going to spill the tea, y'all, that there's a <laughs> private dinner for select individuals who will be joining the conference. And we'll let you know that stuff at the conference about the private dinner for the select that will be attending this private dinner. And also that the first 10 people who purchase their tickets will be entered into a drawing to receive a $50 TJ Maxx gift card who, that will be awarded during the conference. Look, we are prepared to bring it, okay? Yes. I'm excited. Yes, and we yes, still yes. have the other contest going on. The first person to go live on their Facebook page and tag us in it, you get free entry into the conference. You cannot beat that, people. 
go Come live on, on your own page. And I know, I know what it's like. You, you start talking, you look at the camera, you may not like how your hair is looking. You got to fix your hair. Uh, oh, shoot, I messed up. Delete that one. Let's start over. That is me. That is me. You don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Just in trying to do some of my lives, I may have my son and my daughter on the other side. And we have bloopers all the time. Yeah. It's we real life, life folk. Yes. <laughs> and oh, by the way, tell us what that mantra means to you. I read twice the We Are Women of Substance mantra. Tell me what that mantra means to you. I've had people reach out to me via messenger or text message, and they're like, oh my God, I felt like you were talking about me. And while I love that, that definitely empowers me and encourages me, and I'm glad that it's empowering you. I would love for you to just go live and say it. You don't have to tell your whole life story. Just in a couple of words, tag us in your video. And the first person to do that, I have a $55 ticket with your name on it. Amen. Chandra, is it possible to read the mantra real quick for those who do not have the book yet? It is. All right, now. It is possible. You can drop <laughs> and it and out tonight. I just saw a man jump on this live, y'all. I did too. Wait, I was going yes. to say thank you to him. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Look, yes. I was say, the conference isn't just limited to women. Men are welcome as well. Absolutely. So get your husband. Yes. We have spouses that support us, and they will be in that room. Absolutely. Invite your husband. It's good for them to know. That's a part Absolutely. of being motivated and encouraged Absolutely. and inspired, especially for women that have significant others. When you and yeah. your other are equally equally yoked and you guys are on one page and you can go and support each other's movements, yeah. that's what life that's is all about. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful yeah. thing. It sure enough is. So, Anthony, we want to see you in the building, brother. Bring your wife, your girlfriend, your mother, your sister, your significant other. It doesn't matter. That's right. We will have open arms. All right, the mantra. So here's the We Are Women of Substance mantra. Define me by the tough emotional battles I fight each day. Define me by the way I keep smiling no matter how emotionally worked up I am. My life is not glorious. I don't have medals and trophies to flaunt, but my biggest trophy is my heart full of love and compassion. I am sensitive and over emotional at times but I'm not weak. I know when, where, and how to react to situations in life. I've been cheated on and betrayed in love, but I'm still not afraid to fall in love again because I have confidence in my abilities to love with all that I have. I have endured the pain of heartbreak and moved on because I'm emotionally strong and I have made my decision to stay happy for myself. I have been broken, shattered, and rebuilt. I am a woman of endurance, confidence, and courage. I have the capacity to endure pain and survive despite all the odds in my life because I am strong through and through. I'm unique in my own special ways, even with my flaws and imperfections. I'm proud of who I am. Yes. Yes and yes. And I have to say, you all, I have to give credit where credit is due. I did not write the mantra. The mantra was actually written by my very own sister, Spring C. Jackson, who is a woman of substance and is a co-author in the book, We Are Women of Substance. Yes, yes. great job, Spring, great job. Great I love job. it. This has been a blast, ladies. Thank you for inviting me, Chandra. This has been a blast. So look, one last time, Kathy, let's wrap it up and tell everybody about this conference one last time. The who, what, when, where, and why. On Saturday, August 25th, from 10 until 2, Tampa Sheridan East. For those of you that are in the Tampa Bay area, that is where Martin Luther King and Falkenberg Road intersect. On the opposite side, you have I-75. Princess Palm Drive, Tampa Sheridan East, from 10 until 2. We will have spoken word. We will have praise dance. We will have a DJ to keep us entertained and on our feet. You're going to get to meet the authors. You will get to meet the visionary author. You will get to meet some of the co-authors. And we have a quick keynote speaker just for you. 
come out and share with us. We want to share with you. If you're in business here in the Tampa Bay area, we want to network with you. We want to collaborate for some of my pioneer Tampa Bay individuals that are active in the communities and you're doing your, your back to school fundraisers and your toy drives and different things in the community. We want to collaborate with you. We want to know how to support your movement and we would love for you to support ours. Saturday, August 25th, 10 to 2, Tampa Sheridan East. Come on, get your tickets. We got two tickets to Eventbrite. offer. Eventbrite, isn't that correct? Eventbrite.com, that's where they get their tickets. Yes. yes. Eventbrite.com, and I saw Chandra put it up. So the link is in the comments. The link is in the comments. Awesome, yes. awesome, if awesome. If you have any questions right now, please drop your questions in the comment section for us. We're more than happy to answer any questions you may have. If you are catching the replay, Please hashtag replay and we will respond to you accordingly. God bless you. It has been a blessing to be on tonight. And God did a shifting in the spirit to make this all happen. Yes. I, I, I'm literally telling y'all that this is God honest truth. He did a shifting in the spirit to make this very live uh, manifest itself. Okay. So I just want to see a, each and every one of you that can hear the sound of our voices to join us 25th August 2018 at the Tampa Sheridan for our inaugural women's conference. We Are Women of Substance is a movement that is moving. Jump on the train because we're going upward and onward. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's Women go. moving from the back to the front of the line. Let's go. Amen. Amen. Star, you want to pray us out of here? I will. I will. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for shifting things for us, Father God. And right now we lay every woman who is on this line and everybody who even catches the replay, God, let us allow us to lay everything before you at the altar, Father God, that we should pick nothing up and carry it with us because we know that you are our God. You are our beginning you are our end you are the middle of the story father god and so we thank you and we know right now that we have the victory because of you your son died on the cross and rose again for us and i thank you god i thank you for being who you are every day Abba father alpha and omega father god i thank you as those of us that are traveling father receive your traveling mercies and grace father god i thank you for sean or god i thank you for kathy our two hosts of our Tampa uh, event, Father. Thank you so much for them. I thank you for every woman, every man who jumped on the live line, who jumps on the replay to see this. And I hope that each of you have a awesome, awesome evening. And thank you, Father, for shifting things in the spirit today that we might come together and just magnify you and glorify you. We ask that you will bless all families to speak sleep peacefully this evening with angels of protection all around us and every member of our family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Ladies, thank you all for jumping on with me so quickly. Please, after this broadcast ends, I would like for you all to put your business links in the comment section. You're a star too. Chandeliers for Christ. And of course, I'll enter the rest of the businesses that I have because we're making money. We are in the business of making money and we want Come to on now. Reach, we want to reach and teach those that need yes. it. So yes. we're coming with it. We are coming with it. I thank you all for jumping on this live line with us. I hope that something that we said tonight resonates in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul. Please share this broadcast out. Please thank share. You. Please like, share, and follow me on this uh, platform. Uh, I hope this has been a blessing to you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Ladies, you stay right there. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I would like to thank all my followers and listeners for tuning in to today's show. You have been listening to Walking in Your Purpose, Thursday night at 8 with Lens of Faith. Connect with me now. I want to hear from you. Please like, share, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Lens of Faith. God bless.